I think the phrase peak oil produces a strong emotional reaction one way or the other. So if you're trying to get people to think about something, if you're trying to get people to, to, to sit up a bit, then it's a quite useful phrase. For those, if you like, who are loosely speaking on the other side, whether it's the companies or the, or the government, they don't like it one little bit because it has, it has this perhaps uh, overly clear, this sort of clarity about it and this, this requirement to make decisions. And th they don't like that idea whatsoever. We're dealing with a dysfunctional culture in the energy industry the same way as the world had to deal with a really dysfunctional culture in the investment banking community. It's different in that this time there are many people warning Many people in and around the oil industry, the industry task force, a cross-section of British industry, the International Energy Agency, for heaven's sakes, in some coded form, that's as though the World Bank was warning five years ago ahead of the financial crash that it would happen. And yet still, they're not listening. Most boardrooms are not listening. Most governments are not listening. Uh, but, you know, at some point, you've got to think, hopefully, we're going to take some lessons out of the fact that we can have a culture that can wreck the world economy or risk wrecking the world economy with the financial crisis and one which once again is risking wrecking the world economy and much else besides in the oil and gas industry. I think that people who are um, not expressing a concern about energy in general and oil in particular are doing that with a good intention. You know, they feel like somehow this is a reality that the uh, public at large can't handle, that this is you know, uh, going to create the kind of insecurities that, uh, that would be destructive. In other words, uh, being in ignorance of these realities is better than knowing them, uh, and that somehow they will be solved. But in reality, if you don't have a public understanding of the issues, you will never have the public support for the solutions. I wonder about uh, why the majors uh, aren't more forthcoming on the peak oil issue. I think there are two reasons. The main reason is that by the time you get to the CEO in a big company, he's advised by economists. Economists and engineers have to totally different polarized views on this. An economist will tell you commodity prices always go down, uh, human ingenuity uh, defeats scarcity, and that's what uh, the big companies are being told. We, on the other hand, we humble engineers and geologists, know it's not true. And um, there are a lot of uh, debates as a result of that. So, th so uh, that's one thing. I, I also think if Exxon, for example, were to come out, it would be world-shaking and political. And maybe they don't want to go there. I think it's, uh, it's very hard to believe that there aren't um, worried voices behind the boardroom doors on, on occasions. I think that, well, I find it hard to believe that the companies uh, cannot see that the expiration record suggests that there's a real problem with new discoveries. But I know that um, people in uh, the major company, the IOCs, have tremendous belief in technology and tremendous belief that technologies which are being developed will improve recovery efficiency. So they see, I think, a drying up of, the, of discoveries, but they see technology being able to achieve higher recovery, not just in new fields, which, which I would accept is, is certainly likely, but they also feel that these technologies, in many cases, will be, um, can be retrofitted or retro-used in older fields. And that, that's something that I find a little bit more difficult to accept. Uh, I, it's, it's not easy once a field has been developed to change the, 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 the way, the technology that you're using to, to exploit that field, to deplete that field. There is a pushback uh, to the notion that there is a plateau in oil supplies, which is largely based on lack of information or lack of uh, research. 
In fact, if you look at published information, for example, British Petroleum's annual statistical report, it very clearly shows that with, from 2003 forward, oil has hardly moved. Uh, so the information is there. If you look at some of the advertising uh, that uh, Chevron has been putting out for years now, they clearly say we're halfway through the world's reserves. The information is there. Uh, the, the facts are there. Oil prices did not jump fourfold, uh, three or four times in the last uh, five years for any reason other than a shortage of supply. Uh, yes, there may have been some uh, recent volatility in 2008, but the price trend started climbing way back, 2002, 2003. So these are realities, and the pushback is a sense that somehow the, uh, the market is, uh, is not able to deal with these realities, that somehow people can't cope with these realities. On the other hand, if you don't talk about them, you never will fix the situation. Uh, this is not going to get any better. It's going to get worse because you have a population growth all over the world. You have a standard of living that is improving all over the world. You have aspirations across the globe for a better quality of life, and people want energy. So it's important to actually talk about the facts and come up with solutions rather than uh, act as if they don't exist, these issues don't exist, and then wait for some solution to materialize out of nowhere. Uh, that's the role of government. Government is to highlight these issues and fix them, or take a, take a stand uh, to try to fix them. And uh, I think the pushback is probably ill-advised.